Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'm gonna to try to explain the solution to a problem that I see a lot and also a common question that I get on my videos. And the problem that I'm talking about can take a few different forms. So maybe you've installed Python, but when you type Python in the command line, it either says that it doesn't recognize the Python command, or maybe it gives you a different version than you thought you've installed. Or maybe you're trying to use a feature that's only available in a later version of Python, you know, like F strings in Python 3.6, and that's just not working. So maybe that means that you're not using the version of Python that you think you're using. Um, you know, also maybe you're trying to import something that you thought you've installed through pip, but it keeps giving you an import error and telling you that it can't find the module. So all of these problems are likely caused by your machine not using the correct Python interpreter. So in this video, we'll be learning how to find out which Python interpreter you're using and where it's located on your machine. And we'll also see how to switch between different Python versions and environments, and also how to troubleshoot imports if they aren't working correctly. So in this video, we're going to be seeing how to do all of this on the Mac and Linux operating systems, but I also have a video on how to do this on Windows as well. So if you're on Windows, then I'll have a link to that video in the description section below. Um, okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I have my terminal opened up here. So first of all, maybe you've installed a newer version of Python, but you're still getting the old version of Python when you type that into your machine. Uh, so I have Python 2 and Python 3 installed on my Mac, but when I open up my command line and I run the Python command, then you can see that we are using uh, Python 2. So let me exit out of that. Now on Mac and Linux, you should always have some version of Python because they ship with Python 2 ready to go. But even if that command didn't work, uh, then we should be able to figure that out. Uh, so don't worry if that didn't work right now. Um, okay, so I've installed Python 3 on this machine, but when I type Python, I keep getting Python 2. Uh, so what's the deal here? Well, on Mac and Linux, a lot of the times when you install Python 3, it will actually install that with the command of Python 3 instead of just Python. So if I want to run Python 3, then I can try that Python 3 command. And we can see that on my machine that works and that we're using Python 3.7 here. So now let me exit out of that again. So when we ran that Python 3 command, that may or may not have worked for you. Now, if it does work, then it means that it found the Python 3 command on our path. And if it doesn't work, then it means that it couldn't find that Python 3 command on our path. And we'll discuss what the path is here in just one second. Um, so this worked for me. So let me find out where this is actually located on my machine. Uh, so one way to see where the actual location of this program is on Mac or Linux is to use the which command. So I can say which Python 3 and hit enter. And you can see that this command is located at user local bin, and then the command is Python 3. Now I use the which command a lot, but it's not very useful if you use aliases. And I use a lot of aliases. Uh, so we'll see some examples of aliases in just a second. But in order for this to work with both commands and the aliases, I've started using the type command. So if I say type Python 3, then we can see that it says Python 3 is hashed and it's at this location. Now yours could just say Python 3 is and then have the location there without the uh, hashed part. Okay, so the Python 3 command inside of this user local bin directory, that is actually what is being run when we run Python 3. And the only reason that works is because that user local bin directory is on our path. And by path, I mean that it's on our path environment variable. That is where your machine looks for all of its commands in a specific order. And we can actually view this path if I say echo and then do a dollar sign and all uppercase path. If I run this, then this gives us our current path here. Now your output here might be a little different than mine, but these are the directories where your machine is looking for commands. So each directory is separated by a colon. So let me split this up on the multiple lines so that we can read this a little bit better. So I'm going to copy this and open this up in Sublime Text, and I will uh, split these up on a colon here so that we can see this a little better. Okay, so this is where our machine is going to look for commands, and it looks in this order. So on my machine, when I type a command like Python 3, 
uh, into the command line, then it will go in this order and say, okay, do I have a Python 3 in user local bin? And that's where it was located. But if it wasn't, then it would have looked in user bin and then bin and then user s bin, then s bin and then user local git bin. So like I said, these might be different on your machine than mine, but this is my current path. So if the directory to the command that you're trying to run isn't on this path environment variable, then it's not going to work. Uh, or if it finds a different version of the command that you want before it finds the one that you wanted to use, then it will use the first one that it found. So if we had a Python here in user bin, but it found one in user local bin, then it's going to use that one in user local bin first. Now we can run these commands by using the full path to these programs also. So for example, another way for me to run Python 3 is just to use the full path of user local bin Python 3. So let me do that. So I'll copy that directory location. Let me bring back up my terminal here and I will clear this out. So now if I say user local bin, then forward slash Python 3 and run that, then we can see that that works. It opens up uh, Python 3.7. So now I'm going to exit out of there. So if your command isn't in a directory in that path environment variable, then you can still run it, but you'll just need to provide the full path to whatever you want to run, just like we did here. Um, so for example, I have an Anaconda version of Python that currently isn't on my path. It's not in my path environment variable, but I know where it's installed on my machine and I can still run that version of Python if I provide the full path to that. Um, so let me do this. So this won't work on your machine unless you've installed this in the same location, but mine is in a directory in my home directory called Anaconda. So if I do an LS in that location, so I'm going to say LS and that's in a directory called Anaconda and it's in the bin folder within Anaconda. So if I do an LS there, you can see that we have a lot of stuff, but if I scroll up here a little bit, then you can see that we have a few different commands. We have Python 3, uh, Python 3.6. If I scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that we also have a Python command. So if I run this Python using the full path, um, then that should run that version of Python. So let me try that. So that was in Anaconda forward slash bin forward slash uh, Python. So if I run that, then you can see that it's running Python 3.6, but it's running the Anaconda version of that. So now let me exit out of that. Now that Python command was a command that wasn't on my path. So I had to specify the entire path to where it was located in order to get that to run. If I was just to type Python, then it would run that Python 2 version that we saw earlier that is on my path. So if I wanted that Python command to be used instead of my current Python command that points to Python 2, then I would need to add that directory on my path so that it sees that directory before the others. So again, I would just add that Anaconda uh, bin directory to my path and we'll see what it looks like to add a directory to the path in just a second. Uh, but let me clear my screen here. Now, if your Python 3 command didn't work earlier, uh, or if it's not using the latest version that you think it should be, then you should go back to the Python website and re-download Python 3 and pay attention to where it installs Python on your machine. Um, so usually installations will automatically add directories to your path for you, but if it's not working, then you might have to do that manually. Uh, so let's see how to manually add a directory to this path. So I'm currently within my home folder here on my terminal. Now, if you're not sure if you're in your home uh, directory, then you can simply do a CD and hit enter and it should take you back to your home folder. And within your home folder, you uh, might have a file called dot uh, bash underscore profile. Now, if you're on a Linux desktop, then that might be a dot bash RC file. Now, if you don't have either of these, then you can simply create one. Um, so let's open this up in the nano editor and see what this looks like. Now, nano isn't the best looking editor, but it's easy for most people to use. So let's go ahead and use that in this video. So I'll say nano, then dot bash underscore profile. And again, on a Linux des desktop, that would be dot bash RC. Now, I might have more in this file than you do. Uh, yours could be completely empty. If it is, then don't worry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my file here. And we can see that I have a few things commented out here at the bottom where it says setting path for Python 3.7. So this is how we actually add a directory to our path environment variable. Uh, so I'm going to uncomment out these lines here, and then we will walk through this. 
Okay, so first we are saying that we want to set the path equal to, and then this big string value here. Um, so first of all, our path is in all uppercase. Uh, the second thing to notice here is that there's no spaces between the variable name and the value. It's just variable equal to value with no spaces in between. That's just how bash works. And then the value that we're setting here is this long string, and this contains the directory that we want to add to our path here. So this is kind of long, but this is where uh, Python installed my version of Python 3.7 whenever I downloaded it online. So this big directory here, forward slash library, frameworks, Python framework, versions 3.7, bin directory. That whole thing I'm adding to my path. Uh, and then we have a colon here, because remember that directories are separated by a colon. And then we have this dollar sign and then curly braces path. Now what this does is it adds the current value of the path uh, to the end of this string. So what would happen if I was to leave this off was that this would just reset the entire path variable uh, just to this one single directory. And that's not what we want. We want to add this directory onto our current path. And specifically, I want this to come before the other directories in the path. Because if I type in Python 3, I want it to be seen from this directory first before any of the other directories in my current path. So I hope that that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. I think that'll make more sense once we echo this back out uh, in the terminal again uh, compared to what it was before. Um, so also we have a line down here that just says export path and that just says, hey, you know, set path to this new uh, variable. OK, so now that we've uncommented out those lines, now let's save these changes by pressing, uh, since we're in nano, control X and then just hit Y for yes to save. And then the name is just bash underscore profile. We can just hit enter and it should have saved those. And now you'll actually need to restart the terminal before those changes take effect. Um, but before we do, let's uh, go ahead and see what this is going to do. So one more time, let me just run that type Python 3 command, or you can use which. And you can see that it says that Python 3 is currently at this location. And now, if we echo out our path, then it says that it's at that location because it found that Python 3 command in this user local bin directory, which is the first directory on our path. So now, if we restart our terminal, so let me uh, re start this and make this large again. So now that I've restarted our terminal, the changes that we made to our bash profile uh, should now take effect. So now if I type type of Python 3 and hit enter, now we can see that it says Python 3 is at this location and that's the location that we added to our path. So now if I go to echo and then dollar sign uh, all uppercase path, then we can see that we have this big long directory here at the beginning of our path and then what our path was uh, before last time we looked at it. So this big long section that I have highlighted here, uh, that is what I meant whenever I said that it adds the current value of the path uh, onto the end of that string. Now that Python 3 command is within this directory and also within this user local bin directory, but since it found it in this directory first and it's first on our path, then that is the one that is going to use. So if you've been having trouble getting the correct Python version or environment to run, then hopefully that clears that up a bit in terms of how you would add those directories to your path environment variable in order to specify which commands you want to prioritize first. Now, a lot of people want to have it set up so that you can use the Python command to open up Python 3 instead of using the Python 3 command. And to make that work, we can simply use an alias. And I mentioned this earlier. Uh, so to create an alias, we can simply say alias Python is equal to Python 3. And again, you want to make sure that you don't have any spaces between the uh, variable and the values there. So if I hit enter, then now if I type Python, then we can see that instead of Python 2.7 like it was using before, now it's using this Python uh, 3.7. And the reason for that is because the Python command is now pointing to the Python 3 command. So we can see this if I type exit, and then let me clear the screen here. Now if I use that type command again, so if I say type Python, then we can see that it 
prints out Python is alias to Python 3. So then if you see that it's an alias, if you want to find the location, then you can just say type of Python 3, just like we did before, and then get the full location to that. Now, the way that we've set this alias right now, that will go away as soon as we restart our terminal. So in order to make the alias permanent, we're going to need to add that to our bash underscore profile as well, uh, which is the same place that we just edited our path environment variable. So I'm going to open that back up. So that was nano dot bash underscore profile, and you have to be in your home directory. Then I'll just do this at the bottom. So I'll go to the bottom and I will say alias Python is equal to Python 3. Now, if you installed Python 3 and it actually installed this as the command Python 3, then most likely it's using uh, pip3 for pip as well. So we're also going to want to alias pip here also. Now, if you're on a Linux instead of a Mac, then it may not have installed pip with Python at all, and you might have to install that through either the apt or yum package manager, depending on which version of Linux you're running. But once you're sure that you have pip installed, if it installed it as pip3, then you can simply create an alias to that as well by saying alias pip is equal to pip3. Um, okay, so now we can save these changes again by hitting control X and then a Y for yes, and then just an enter to keep the same file name. And again, we'll need to restart the terminal for those changes to take effect. So I will restart that and maximize it there. Okay, so first let's make sure pip is working. So I will say uh, type of pip, we can see that it's alias to pip three. So type of pip three, and it's in this location here, which is the same location as my Python three command, but that might not always be the case. So you definitely wanna watch out for that. Um, but now if we type in pip list, then we can see that that works fine. Um, okay, so now let's look at a couple more tips. So let's say that your Python command is working, but you have no idea which Python executable uh, you're using or where it's located on your machine. Now this can definitely happen if you're using virtual environments or you have a lot of different versions of Python installed. Um, so let's say you type in Python and it says that you are running Python 3.7. Now that doesn't really do you much good if you have 10 different virtual environments that are all using Python 3.7. So how can we actually see exactly which Python we're running? So to find this out, we can use the sys module, which is in the standard library. So if we import sys, now like I said, that's a built-in module, so you don't need to install anything. So now we can simply look at sys.executable. And we can see there where our current executable is located. Um, so if that value is what you expect it to be, then that's great. But if it's not, then using the value returned from sys.executable can help you debug what's going on if it's not the directory that you think it should be. So if you think it should be something else, then you'll have to check your path and try to figure out why that executable is being seen before the executable that you think it should be. So there might need to be some rearrangement with the path variable like we saw a second ago. And again, if you want to view your entire path from within the command line, then you can simply do that with the echo command. So again, I will exit that and say echo uh, dollar sign uppercase path. Then you could compare this executable location here uh, with your path. And if you're having any issues with that, then echoing that out might make it obvious why it's running one Python command instead of another. Okay, so now let me clear my screen out here. Um, so I also get a lot of questions from people who tell me that they've in, uh, pip installed a package, but when they try to import that package, it doesn't work. So this can also be a path issue. So Python and pip are two separate commands and therefore could be located in two different places. So if your path is messed up, then it's entirely possible that what you're installing with pip isn't installing that package for the version of Python that you think it's installing it for. Um, so for example, let's say that I wanted to install Django. So I could just simply say pip install Django. And when I run that, we can see that we already have this installed. And it also gives me the location where Django is installed. It says that it's already satisfied and it's in this location here. So that is in the site packages folder of that Python 3 location that we saw before. Now, another way to get this location of a package is to use the pip show command. So if I do pip show, 
Django and run that, then it gives us a lot of information here, but one of these is the location. So we can see uh, here it's in this site packages directory. So if you're trying to import a package that you've installed and it says that it can't find the package, then make sure that the location of the package is actually in that site packages directory of the version of Python that you're using. So if I open up Python here and I do, you know, import uh, Django, then we can see that that works. Now, if that didn't work, then you might be confused because maybe you did a pip install and it looked like everything went fine. But in that case, you want to do that pip show of the package and make sure that this location here matches what you get from that sys.executable. So I'll say import sys, then print out sys.executable. And we can see that uh, we have this location here and that's also where it's looking for our Django package in our site packages directory. So we know that that's going to work. If those are in two different locations, then that gives you your answer to why your package isn't importing correctly. Because that would mean that your pip is actually installing that package to a different version of Python. And again, just like with the other problems that we've talked about in this video so far, that would be a path environment variable issue. And you would have to debug that and figure out you know, why those commands are not running like you think they should, and you might need to rearrange those directories in your path environment variable. Okay, so now let me exit this and clear the screen. Now, I think that that's everything I wanted to cover in terms of figuring out how to set your Python path and see which executable you're using. But another thing that I should mention is that we mainly covered the command line in this video, but sometimes I get questions from people who are using an editor like Sublime Text or something similar, and they tell me that their command line is using the correct version of Python, but that their editor is not. Um, so for example, sometimes people will tell me that F strings aren't working for them uh, and that they have Python 3.6 installed. Uh, well, most likely that means that your editor just isn't using Python 3.6, even though you installed it. And a good way to determine that would be to compare that sys.executable value that we saw before. So some editors might have a different way of determining which version of Python they're using instead of just looking at your path. Now in Sublime Text, they use something called build systems, and I have a completely separate video on how to set up Sublime Text build systems. Uh, but understanding what we covered in this video here should help you better figure out which directories you'll need to add to those build systems in order to get them properly set up. And you may need to do something similar with other editors or IDEs as well, uh, depending on what you're using. But really quick, let me show you a fast example uh, using Sublime Text. So I'm going to pull up my Sublime Text here where I just have a simple file. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here since this isn't exactly a Sublime Text tutorial, um, but, you know, this is something that you could use to debug other editors and IDEs as well if it's not using the version of Python that you think it should be using. So really quick, I'll just show you how I've set this up uh, on mine to switch between Python 2 and Python 3. So I have a demo file here where I'm just printing out the sys.version and the sys.executable. So if I run this right now, then you can see that right now it's running Python 3.7 and it's using the executable uh, that we saw before from that uh, library framework's uh, 3.7 bin folder. But what if instead I wanted to use a different version of Python or I wanted to use uh, a Python from a virtual environment? So to do that, I would need to create a new build system. So if I come up here in Sublime Text and go to Tools and then Build System, then at the bottom here we can see that I can go to New Build System. Now, if you create a new build system, then it's basically just going to give you a JSON document where there are a couple of things that you need to set. Now, one of those will be uh, which Python executable that you want to use. So I am not going to do a new build system now. I already have one created here. You can see I have a Python 2.7 here. So let's say I wanted to use Python 2.7. Well, I have that build system opened up. And we can see that I have a couple of different things set here. Now, again, I'm not going to go into this fully since I have a completely different video on this. Uh, but you can see here that within my command, I there is a place here where I'm passing in the full path to my Python 2.7 uh, command here in the user bin directory. And that is what runs Python 2.7.
So now if I go back to that same file that gave us Python 3.7 before, and I change this build system to be Python 2.7 instead, if I run that, then you can see that now our version says 2.7 and our executable says uh, user bin Python. And technically we should change the syntax of that print statement to be Python 2.7 at this point, uh, but that's okay as is for now, it's just a demonstration. So in this example, we set this up to where the executable uh, points to, you know, Python 2, but you could also set that up to set to, uh, you know, a virtual environment or anything like that. Um, speaking of which, lastly, I would also briefly uh, like to talk about virtual environments. Now, if you've never used a virtual environment, it's basically a way to have separate Python environments per project. And that also includes uh, separate Python executables and packages. Now, you might be wondering if you'd have to go through this whole path process every time you activate and deactivate a virtual environment. But in the command line, you won't have to do that. When you activate and deactivate a virtual environment in the command line, there is usually code included that automatically adds and removes those directories to the beginning of your path for you, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. So for example, let me pull back up my command line here, and let me activate one of my virtual environments. This is a Conda virtual environment, and this is what I used in my Flask series. So to, so to activate this environment, I can do source anaconda, and that is with within bin dash activate and the name of that uh, of that environment was flask blog so if I run that then we can see that now we get this flask blog in parentheses so we can kind of tell we're in a virtual environment um, but now if I say which Python then you can see that my Python command uh, is now pointed to this directory here, to this executable. It's within this Anaconda environments flask blog bin directory. So that means that that directory was automatically added to my path. So just to test that, let me echo out my path. So I'll do echo path, and we can see that that bin directory for that flask blog environment is at the beginning of my path now. So that is the Python command that it sees. Now, actually, my Python command should still be aliased uh, to Python 3, and it is, uh, but that directory also here in this virtual environment also has a Python 3 command. So that is why that is working for both of those. Now, again, if I wanted to be absolutely sure that it was using the correct executable, then I could run Python and then import sys and look at that sys.executable like we saw before. Now, when it comes to using virtual environments with different IDEs or different editors, uh, so for example, using an editor like Sublime Text or anything else, then you'll just have to do a search online and see exactly how to set those up in order to use the environment within that editor. So in Sublime Text, it's the build systems that we saw here. So you just have to go in and create a build system using the Python executable for that environment. But I'm sure that it's different uh, within other editors. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a video on the newest official way to handle virtual environments using pip env. So if you're interested in learning more about virtual environments, then be on the lookout for that video. Okay, so let me clear out my screen here. Okay, so in this video, we've gone over one of the most common forms of questions that I get among people who are just getting started out with Python. So it's common when people are first getting started out to occasionally get stuck in these same places. Now, when it comes to getting started out in computer science in general, uh, that same concept applies. The most common questions I see there have to do with the fundamentals, such as data structures or algorithms. Now, a great resource for learning and practicing those common fundamentals would be our sponsor for this video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that helps you understand underlying concepts by actively working through guided lessons. They have computer science courses ranging from algorithms and data structures to machine learning and neural networks. They even have a coding environment built into their website so that you can run code directly in the browser. And that's a great way to complement watching my tutorials because you can apply what you've learned in their active problem-solving environment, and that helps to solidify that knowledge. Their guided lessons will challenge you, but you also have the ability to get hints or even solutions if you need them. It's really tailored towards understanding that material. So their computer science material is fantastic and I really like what they're doing. They also have plenty of courses depending on what you're most interested in. So they have courses in different fields of mathematics or astronomy, solar energy, computational biology, and all kinds of other great content.
So to support my channel and learn more about Brilliant, you can go to brilliant.org forward slash CMS to sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. And you can find that link in the description section below. And again, that's brilliant.org forward slash CMS. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully now you have a good idea for how you can manually set the Python path if you need to, and also how you can switch between different versions and executables. But if you do have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.